This vlog will address skills and capacities in speed and agility and will attempt to present kinematic descriptions of different athletes performing linear speed and agility drills respectively, along with their relevant limitations. Some of the skills inherent to speed and agility which this vlog will also address are projection, rhythm, rise, timing, push-off and la uh, landing relative to center of mass, while capacities that will be addressed and analyzed are rate of force development, posture, impulse, hip disassociation, including flexion and extension, lower limb stiffness and thoracic mobility. Limitations in skills and capacities in linear speed may apply to acceleration mechanics, posture during high speed running, or the ability to generate force, predominantly vertically, but also horizontally. The two videos present capacity limitation in acceleration mechanics through a resisted acceleration drill, and a skill limitation involving an A-skip variation. This first video actually features myself as the athlete and I'm going through several reps of band resisted accelerations. We can see that the first step seems to follow quite a good technical model with strong separation of the arms, a strong forward lean, full hip extension, a high hip angle on the drive leg and dorsiflexion of the foot. However, the stride length seen in the first step shortens in the following steps where we can also see a lower than optimal knee drive. From a different angle on a subsequent rep, we notice a couple of further issues, namely lower knee drive and hip flexion, particularly on the right side, resulting in a shorter stride, as well as relatively low heel recovery. From the posterior view, we again see decent arm separation, but notice excessive supination of the foot, thus reducing the foot's ability to absorb the impact of the stride. And we can see that in three different cases here. The issues presented here are related, uh, related both to skill and capacity, as hip structure may be dictating over supination, while skill issues may be the driver for low heel recovery and insufficient hip flexion or knee drive in later stages of acceleration. As the key performance indicators in acceleration are vectors and angles of movement, a couple of drills that could be used to improve acceleration mechanics and capacities in this case include half kneeling and band resisted half kneeling knee drives to a box which address front-end mechanics, knee drive and hip extension, as displayed in the videos. It also forces ankle dorsiflexion through the box landing. The second athlete is performing a skipping variation, where he was instructed to strike the ground with the drive leg on every second hop with the stance leg, yet he's unable to comply due to a skill limitation. What we would ideally see would be toe up, heel up, knee up, along with the foot landing vertically below the center of mass. What the athlete represents with is a skill issue, particularly an inability to generate optimal rhythm, where he's unable to achieve good hip disassociation, generate force vertically into the ground to achieve a high ground reaction force. Now he visibly regularly lands with his foot well in front of his center of mass and does not ha achieve adequate hip flexion as well as knee extension on the stance leg. As he goes through a couple more reps, he does find a little bit more rhythm but still strikes his front foot well in front of his center of mass while being able to improve his hip flexion slightly. This skill issue is perhaps quite intuitive considering that the athlete is a high level downhill mountain biker as, as his sport does not require him to flex and extend the hip like linear acceleration and running would. Now a drill or a couple of drills we could use to uh, improve the mechanics in the skip and subsequent linear running would be variations of the switch step uh, as displayed in the two videos presented here where we could move from an unassisted position to an unassisted uh, and drop progression in the hip switch. Uh, here we would cue landing vertically under the center of mass achieving a hip lock position in high hip flexion and applying force vertically into the ground. This vlog will address skills and capacities in speed and agility and will attempt to present kinematic descriptions of different athletes performing linear speed and agility drills respectively, along with their relevant limitations. Some of the skills inherent to speed and agility, which this vlog will also address, are projection, rhythm, rise, timing, push-off and la uh, landing relative to center of mass, while capacities that will be addressed and analyzed are rate of force development, posture, impulse, hip disassociation, including flexion and extension, lower limb stiffness, and thoracic mobility. 
In the third video series, I'm performing a change of direction drill, which includes two 45 degree cuts, and my force vector application is actually being measured on a force plate in order to gauge how much force I'm applying through each hip, hence the 3D videos of the force vectors following the drills. Now, I would argue that what is presented here is a skill issue, as there is a task constraint of a small polygon with limited time and space to make a quick and sharp cut, coupled with issues of friction owing to the surface and choice of footwear. In the first of the videos, we can see that the hips are not dropped low enough with feet spread wider to allow more force application through the right foot at push-off. The foot placing is also suboptimal, as the close stance does not allow a good exit from the cut. In the second video that compares the first two reps, we can see a slight improvement in the foot placing on the second uh, rep in the first cut, in including a better head position with a forward gaze rather than down and better torso rotation and exit from the second cut. The third rep demonstrates a poorer foot position in the first cut with the feet positioned too close and the angle of the back foot not facilitating a good exit from the cut. The exit from the second cut is also visibly suboptimal as there is a curve in the movement rather than exiting in a straight line. Having addressed this as a skill issue however, uh, the skill limitation does manifest itself in a capacity issue as well as this 3D model of the cut shows lower hip extension and force application in the right leg, particularly in the front view of the groin cut, albeit uh, a subtle difference. A drill we use to address force transfer from the back foot onto the front foot in a cut, which is applicable to change of direction tasks and addresses foot position upon landing and torso rotation, is the counter movement rotational med ball throw, as shown in the video here. For the last drill, I filmed the volleyball player demonstrating 280 degree cuts with an additional task of picking up a tennis ball in the first cut. This is a progression in the continuum from no choice drills to choice drills such as a mirror drill to game speed drills. Now in this case we're adding task based constraints whereby the drill is intended to force the athlete to load both hips by instructing her to pick up the tennis ball instead of just making a 180 degree cut and load the front foot. As we can see, she loads the back foot well and then shifts her weight onto the left foot while also turning the foot out into the direction of travel. This allows her to move into a crossover step even though she does not get a lot of hip flexion in her first step out of the cut. When coming into the cone, she loads the inside foot well, again placing it into the direction of travel. As you can notice, she's quite good at rotating the trunk into the direction of travel, which is a big factor in change of direction performance. The athlete is clearly skillful enough to perform the drill in an efficient manner, although she lacks certain capacities, particularly the strong hip disassociation coming out of the cut, where the angle of hip flexion could be higher. Her anthropometrics also represent a capacity issue, as her long limbs require her to get very low in the hips in order for her to be efficient out of the cut, which is not always the case. In the comparison video featuring a subsequent rep, the athlete is slower in rotating through the trunk on the second rep, or she also keeps her hips higher, meaning that she's not able to produce as much force coming out from the cut. On her final rep in the third video, she doesn't open her foot out as much as in the direction of travel, again resulting in a lower force production out of the cut. The capacity issue here seems to be related to conditioning, as the athlete seems to tie over the course of a total of five reps, with slight deterioration of mechanics in the change of direction. To summarise, it is important to understand that athletes will present with limitations in skills and capacities depending on the task constraint and environment. Now there are certain common landmarks in the technical model of developing speed and agility that we as coaches look to identify when programming drills and exercises. Obviously, limitations in skills and capacities present themselves more visibly when the athlete is fatigued. Even though we've addressed key issues with skills and capacities in speed and agility throughout the vlog, it's important to note that many of the issues we note can seldom be looked at in isolation, whereby capacity limitations may impact skill and vice versa. As we look to guide our athletes towards an optimal technical model, we need to understand and take into account the unique nature of each athlete and corresponding coaching cues that will help athletes get into better positions and solve movement tasks in the most efficient manner possible.